question. Now we're going to talk about radio receivers. Radio receivers, they had many different kinds to start with. Some were, most of the early ones were very inefficient. This one was the first one of the first ones, aside from the crystal set. Uh, the crystal set had no amplification. The crystal set, your headphone was powered by the electronic signal made from the RF signal coming in from the air. So no amplification. It, but you could, you could hear the radio very faintly through your headphone. What's happening here is, it's called a regenerative receiver or an audio autodyne. You have your antenna going through a coil, a part of a transmitter, and then this makes an LC circuit which tunes the resonant frequency of this receiver to the radio station you want to receive. That's fed to this amplifier, okay? And this amplifier then sends a signal back to what's called a tickler coil. Now this is a form of feedback, but instead of making an oscillator, what it's doing is it's taking the chosen radio signal that's coming in and it's amplifying it over and over and over and over and over again, making more gain. Regenerative receiver. That is then fed, the output of that is fed to your headphones and your volume controls here controlling the gain of that amplifier. The problem with regeneration is sometimes really hinders your fidelity, your quality of your signal. But that was the very first simple kind of amplified receiver. After regenerative, they went to something called a TRF, tuned radio frequency. Most of the very old radio receivers before say 1930 were TRFs and what they did was they had stage after stage after stage of RF amplification <clears throat> and you would tune each section and you would work your best to get a station in clearly. The problem with regeneration <clears throat> and the problem with TRF was that it was very bad at isolating channels one from another. In the early days of radio, this made a very clean, clear, good sounding signal. However, you only had a few radio stations. As more and more radio stations started to exist, then this system became virtually impossible to work with as far as separating your channels. So inevitably, if you were to run a TRF now, you would hear the channel you'd tuned in, but you would also hear another radio station nearby. And so, <clears throat> mixed in with the audio of what you were listening to off your main channel, you'd hear someone talking or something, or some noise, because this one was not very selective. It made a nice, great, clean, clear sound if you only had maybe two or three or four or five radio transmitters in the whole world. But they had to come up with a way, as there got to be more and more radio stations, of not having them interfere with each other. And the stations got more powerful, there got to be more of them, making this impractical. And so here comes Major Armstrong again. He came up with something called a superheterodyne radio receiver. Now, this was this is the this is the practical radio receiver that's used all in almost all rece reception technology today superheterodyne and it involves something called the heterodyne principle or superheterodyne principle whatever you want to call it um, and that is if you combine signals where did I set that oh here it is okay um, if I combine radio signals it's called heterodyning. I, let's say I have a signal here that's at 1 kc, 1,000 cycles. And I have another signal here that's a higher frequency at 2 kc. And I feed that into a heterodyning system. Okay, I have 1,000 coming in and 2,000 coming in. When I combine those two in a heterodyning system, the output of that is the two fundamentals. You get a 1KC and you get a 2KC. But you also get the additive and subtractive. 
So I get an output of 3kc. And I also get another one out. This is bad math because if I'm subtracting, I get another 1kc. So basically, this is 1 subtracted for 2 making 1, and then these 2 making 3. But what we usually do is this one that's a subtractive signal. The one that's subtractive is the one that we use to work with is something called an intermediate frequency. Um, these are the fundamentals. This is additive. This is subtractive. So basically, the algebra of this would be a little bit more understandable. This would be frequency 1 and frequency 2. And then we'd have frequency 1 plus frequency 2, which is our additive frequency. And then we'd have frequency 1 minus frequency 2, which would be our subtractive frequency. OK? And that usually, that's, this is the lowest frequency here, the subtractive. And that makes something called an intermediate frequency. Okay. Now, how does that work to make a great radio receiver? What's going on here is in a superheterodyne, <coughs> we've got an RF amplifier taking in a signal from an antenna. And that first stage of RF amplification is for amplifying the band, either whatever band you're going to receive, like it's amplifying a part of the short wave band. It's amplifying the AM radio band. It's amplifying the FM radio band, okay? Whatever that band is, this is a broadband amplifier amplifying just the band you're bringing in for this receiver. That's fed into a mixer. A mixer is the, where the superheterodyning takes place, okay? And we have an oscillator here. And this oscillator is mixed with the RS, all the RF signals from the entire band in this mixer. <clears throat> and what happens is that the oscillator is made to change frequency. We make the oscillate, oscillator oscillate at a lower frequency or a higher frequency, and that change of the oscillator frequency means the subtractive heterodyne frequency, which is the intermediate frequency, is shifted. So what's happening is I am uh, interacting through heterodyning with all the stations coming in and I choose a oscillator frequency that when it's heterodyned with the incoming channel I want, it makes a subtractive frequency, which is the intermediate frequency because all the circuitry passed here is only going to amplify at that chosen intermediate frequency. So. Whatever the channel's coming in, heterodynes with a signal from the oscillator producing that channel on another carrier, that's the intermediate frequency, that goes to a demodulator just like in the um, basic AM radio. And what this does is it removes the carrier wave, in this case the intermediate frequency carrier wave, away from the audio signal, leaving only, only the audio signal. And then that's amplified and fed to a loudspeaker. And what that, what that would mean is if I um, have an entire band, let's say I have a AM radio band, okay, from here to here, okay, and on this band, that's all I'm amplifying with the first stage of amplification, and that is going to have several stations on it, okay? And so I'm bringing that whole band in. But then when I take my oscillator and I vary its frequency, that means after heterodyning subtraction, it's only going to look at that area there because the heterodyning frequency when, it's, when the oscillator is heterodyned with that radio station, then it produces something that is the intermediate frequency. That's a very important method uh, for radio reception. It's the standard we use today.